And what this will do is show how Chicago began um, literally as a portage where the French trappers and traders would carry their canoes from Lake Michigan the shortest distance possible to the Illinois River where once they reached the Illinois River, they could then continue on to the Mississippi and uh, trade their uh, furs either to the Indians or vice versa from the Mississippi to the East Coast back to the French. Um, this dates all the way back to the 16 and 1500s. However, obviously their ships, their craft were small and so we need more than that. The next major step was the railroad. And the railroad first arrived in Chicago in 1848. And the first train to enter our city was called the Pioneer. And she was a small locomotive with about three rail cars behind her and only traveled a distance of 10 miles, but nevertheless ushered in a brand new era of Chicago history. And we have since become the rail hub of America. This is another story that needs to be told. Um, shipping has also been one of the primary boons to our great city. Lake Michigan is literally our portal to the world, as if it were an ocean. One of the greatest, in fact, the greatest maritime disasters in the history of the United States took place right here in Chicago, on the Chicago River at Clark Street. It was the Eastland disaster in 1915, when a ship with 2,500 passengers on board overturned in the river and killed 823. There has never been a greater loss, a single loss of life in the city of Chicago than that one incident, yet all 823 of them seem to go forgotten. That is another reason why this museum must exist. Hmm. Of course, the last mode of transportation I've left out is the airplane. The first airplane to fly in Chicago arrived in 1909, and you may say, why did it take six years from when the Wright brothers first flew until we received it here? And the answer is simple. There were very few flights anywhere, let alone Chicago, after 1903, because the Wright brothers wanted to protect their patent. They were afraid it would be stolen from them. And so it was at Hawthorne Field near Midway Airport, where I understand you interviewed some folks earlier today, that the first airplane, the first heavier-than-air aircraft to fly in Chicago took place, um, racing, in fact, a motorcycle, and the motorcycle won. Um, obviously, Chicago continued to become a major uh, aerial center for the United States, uh, epitomized by O'Hare Field. O'Hare Field, which for many years was indeed the busiest airport in the world. Um, that has, of course, come into question within the last couple of years as uh, Florida has become one of the major tourist attractions of the United States, and Hartsfield Airport in Atlanta has taken that title away from us. However, plans are currently underway to erect a new runway at O'Hare, and then we will once again be restored the title of the busiest airport in the world. Does O'Hare Airport fall within the city limits? Yes, O'Hare Airport does fall within the city limits. Um, it was originally a small grass strip called Orchard Field uh, because of the orchards of um, uh, fruit trees that uh, surrounded it. However, uh, as Midway, then known as Municipal Airport on the south side, became busier, it was, a second airport was necessitated. And in 1948, um, following the death uh, four years earlier of Butch O'Hare, uh, in the United States Navy after he had become a world-famous flying ace, um, Old Orchard Field became known as O'Hare International Airport and uh, has, as I mentioned, since become the busiest uh, in the country. Hmm. Now, um, O'Hare Field was incorporated as a part of Chicago through a little bit of gerrymandering. In order for the city to receive the revenue um, from the airport, they actually extended the city limits along a thin, narrow strip from, the, from what had been the original boundary out to where it's located, approximately, I'd say, 15 miles northwest of the previous uh, city limits.